In the last video, we developed the framework of the Samuelson multiplier acceleration model. And now we will try to use this framework to solve this and get the solution of the national income explained by this interaction model. So this framework is this. We have borrowed it from the last lecture. And now we are going to plug these values into the expenditure approach equation, which is this. The first term is underlined, the second term is overlined, and the third term is kept as it is. So this is the value of the first term, that is CT. This is the value of second term, which is IT. And this is the value of the third term, which is GT. So it is written in such a way, which is very much readable, and you can guess that how the values are substituted. Now we are going to do a little bit of uh, adjustment because we know that this is the given situation where the value of ct is given. However, the value of ct minus 1 is not given, but we know that in the difference equations, we can develop any lag or lead term. So using this value, I can simply create the value of ct minus 1. And for that, I need to introduce minus 1 here so that it becomes ct minus 1 as it is now become. And this was the process in which we did this. CT minus 1 it became because I introduced minus 1. And on the right hand side I have to do the same. That is to introduce minus 1 in the subscript. So it became T minus 2. So now we have the value of CT minus 1. And you can see that we have put it in a box. And now we are going to put this value from here. So in the next step you can see the value is substituted. And now the benefit of using this is that these C's, both of these C's are now gotten rid of and only YT or YT minus 1 or YT minus 1, any lag or lead of Y is there. No other variable with subscript T is there. This is G0 which is autonomous, which is considered to be given and not variable in this case. So further, we should try to solve this. This alpha was being multiplied and we have multiplied it on both, you know, with, with both of the terms. And then we can see that there are three kinds of terms, yt, yt minus one and yt minus two. So we are rearranging them in such a way that yt comes in the beginning and then yt minus 1 then yt minus 2 since there were two terms of yt minus 1 I have gathered them by taking a common now if I look at it and if I compare it with the standard form of second order difference equation it is having a small difference and that is in that we started with a lead of 2 whereas it is starting with the current value that is yt and there is a lag of 2. So we can convert this into the standard form comparison by simply introducing a lead of 2 so that it becomes yt plus 2. So here you see that we have added 2 in the subscript of all the terms here as well as here and here as well. So when I did this introduction of 2 in all of these uh, subscripts further simplification gave me this term. Uh, this became t plus 1 and this became t because minus 2 and plus 2 got cancelled out and g0 remains the same. Now when I look at this equation it is now directly comparable with this standard form that is the standard form of the second order difference equation. So comparing it and extracting the values yt plus 2, yt plus 1, yt are the three versions of the variable. This is the value of a1, this is the value of a2, and this is the value of c. So I'm going to write all these terms, that is in place of small y, we have capital Y. The value of a1 is this, the value of a2 is this, and the value of small c is this. So the particular integral can be easily calculated simply by using the formula. But before we do that, we remember that in first or second order difference equation, we have to see if this sum, that is the sum of a1 and a2, is equal to minus 1 or not. This is something we need to check. So for that, we are going to find out if the sum is equal to minus 1 or not. So the value of a1 and the value of a2 are substituted in this simple sum. 
and the cancellation will take place of these two terms once we do this simple algebraic calculations the answer is equal to minus 1 and uh, minus gamma so minus gamma is actually the negative version of MPC and about MPC we know that it is somewhere in between 0 and 1 so it is not equal to 1 neither equal to 0 so if it is not equal to 1 it means that it is minus some sort of fraction that is less than 1 so we can say that it is not equal to minus 1 so in this case the formula for yp that is the particular integral has a certain shape that we will see and we remember that as well this is the formula which is used once the sum of a1 and a2 is not equal to minus 1 so we are putting the values of a1 and a2 here and cancellation will give us this result simplification this is the particular integral or the equilibrium level of national income in other words it is the intertemporal equilibrium of national in income because this is the uh, dynamic version of the equilibrium so it is intertemporal precisely speaking now this was about the equilibrium value of the particular integral but when we talk about the dynamic solution we have a time path which has not just equilibrium rather the complementary or the deviation part as well for deviation part primarily we check the three cases out of which which one of the case is existing here this is based upon the discriminant that is a1 square minus 4a2 its value its comparison with zero so we can write it like this in the form of this uh, these three possibilities the first possibility as we already know from the videos of second order difference equation that the first possibility is of the distinct real roots so we put the value of a1 and a2 here and we solve it once we solve it we get this symbolic response it is no, giving us no meaning right now because we do not have their numerical values we will do this in the next video but this is uh, right now a certain inequality that we can write in a more uh, presentable form this is something that I think is suitable because it is giving us the value of MPC in terms of alpha so this is something that we can do just to see that uh, the answer is going to give us a distinct real root case or any other so for the repeated real root case uh, the discriminant is equal to zero or in other words this value is holding true this equation and once we put these values we can solve it and again the value of gamma can be written like this in this case we have an equality instead of an inequality so the value of gamma is again the same whereas it was greater than before and in the next case it is likely to be less than because in the complex root case we, we, we know that the discriminant is negative so learning from the previous two cases we can say it will be less than case here because a1 square and 4a2 they are remaining the same they are having the same values so now we have all of these three cases and what we can conclude from this uh, solution is that in terms of alpha and gamma if we have these values we can come up with either of the cases of complementary function by examining the nature of its roots that is distinct real root or equal real root or complex roots and then we can solve it and get the overall solution that is the time path of the multiplier accelerator model so now we have all the information that we need to solve and now we are going to do a numerical of this that is the Samuelson's multiplier accelerator model in the next video thanks